Hello, I'm Paul Beckwith. In this video, I'm going to talk all about the Arctic sea ice. It's September. We're nearing the uh, sea ice minimum, which is usually about mid-September 2018. And what I'm going to talk about is I'm going to compare, I'm going to analyze how the sea ice has changed, um, how it's different this year compared to last year and the year before and the year before. So look at the um, spatial characteristics of the sea ice uh, over the last few years and then discuss you know how things are different and how close are we actually getting to a blue ocean event where there's no arctic sea ice this year and the last few years the big thing has been the incredible thinning of the sea ice and I would fully expect that the so, so this is measured you can see um, this this is measured you need to measure the thickness of the of the sea ice um, and I'm not sure the extent numbers and the area numbers are there they could be a bit misleading because the ice is getting thinner and thinner and thinner and the extent could actually stay the same until suddenly the extent just plummets down to zero because we just have <coughs> slushy ice on the surface so a big but it's over a large surface and then suddenly boom it all it, it melts out or it's carried out um, of the Arctic basin by a big cyclone or something so the big question is you know when are we going to get this first blue ocean event so let's look at let's look at the nuts and bolts and details of what's been happening with the Arctic sea ice okay but before I do that I just want to mention a little bit about um, my previous video so this is my website paulbeckwith.net so please have a look at it if you haven't watched this video I talked about the quality of life dropping as climate change was hitting home with all the heat waves and wildfires and droughts and uh, you know the, the, the in-your-face problems of climate change and I encourage people in the comment section uh, the comment section is is the best thing of, of this video it's your comments there's about 650 comments there's people from all over the world talking about their summer experiences and a lot of people are getting extremely scared as they should be about climate change we're in a climate emergency we're getting massive changes and we need governments and politicians and everybody to wake up and for that change to happen we need massive noise from the scientific community and from the public massive uproars you know it's it's time to go up on top of those buildings and and yell you know climate change emergency you know we're, we're getting at that state really i mean many people around the world are being uh, affected in in huge ways so please uh have a look at the video and consider um donating uh to support my work uh, i've got paypal you don't need paypal you just need a credit card and thank you uh, to everybody that has, has supported me up to now. I really I, I really couldn't be doing this with, without you. Okay, so let's look at the at what's happening in the Arctic. So the best thing you can do is Google Arctic sea ice graphs and you come to this uh, website and you get almost real-time data in the form of maps and graphs, etc. Um, it, they're, they're very current, usually the previous day. So here we are, it's September 5th, and this is yesterday, September 4th. This is the uh, Arctic uh, sea ice concentration. So 100% is all ice, 50% would be half ice, half water, etc. And you can see what's left. Okay, so there's there's this pocket of ice uh, centered in the in the uh, Arctic Ocean. This is another view, another view of sea ice concentration. Um, and then you can get the graphs. Now, sea ice extent is defined as the area of ocean with at least 15% sea ice. So most of it's water, 85% water, 15% ice. And it's, it's caught in this, in this uh, measurement. And here's where we're heading here. But like I said, <coughs> this is 2012 in the 2012 minimum. The key thing is, is in 2012, Although the extent was much lower, the ice was much thicker. Okay, so the ice was broken up, and uh, 
it, you know, it, it was um, attacked and reduced, but it, sorry, but it, it, it wasn't fractured and slushy and broken up as it is now. It's a lot thinner now. Um, and like I said, I would expect that this graph, instead of just following, you know, a slow trend down, I think we're going to see extreme non-linear drops um, as we get closer and closer to a, a blue ocean event. And uh, this is National Snow and Ice Data Center. This is the European uh, satellite data. Um, this is the Japanese. And you can click on any of these to get additional details and information on those measurements. So there's lots of good stuff here, but I'm going to scroll down to um, some of the um, <coughs> data here. Um, this is ice speed and drift, and this is the ice thickness. So let's have a look at the uh, at the ice thickness. Okay, so if you click on it, um, you can play these different movies. So this is the ice thickness uh, over the last uh, 30 days. Okay, and you can see how it's uh, it's actually over the last three weeks projected to the 12th, projected about a week out, and you can see how it's uh, moving and uh, you know it's basically contracting okay um, you can really see that there's no thick ice I mean the blue here is one 1.25 meters or so some of the two meter the only two meter stuff is just north of the Canadian archipelago uh, you know north uh, north of um, <coughs> near Strait here um, the the thicker ice that was along the northern part of Greenland um, was sheared away actually in the winter and the ice regrew but it was thin so it was sheared away uh, recently and this was thought to be the ice that would last the longest out of any ice in the basin well not 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 looking that way um, if we do the last 12 months um, this is starting this is about this is the beginning of this year now I don't think I'm gonna get a full 12 months or something weird with this but you can see the ice it grows and grows until about um, March, mid-March or so, and then it starts to decrease. Um, now for some reason, um, so there it's decreasing, and then it stops um, May 15th for some reason. I don't know why it doesn't play a full year and, and end um, in September, which it normally does. It's behaving weird. don't know how long it's been doing that. Now you can see how the ice is lost. There's, there's ice export out the Fram Strait. There's ice export out the nearest strait. There's ice going out through the Canadian Archipelago. <coughs> um, this ice through the Canadian Archipelago is a fairly recent phenomena. Before the ice was ridged so much here that it blocked all the channels. But now because the ice is slush, slushy and thinner and fractured and broken up, it's just sliding through these islands. So an area of big export here. Um, of course, you get some export out towards um, this region of the Arctic where it melts quickly and also through here you get Arctic you get ice melting from the air temperature above being greater than the melting temperature and also water temperature below melting the ice so you have all of these factors affecting the ice to look at the motion of the ice um, we can play this uh, uh, there it is speed and drift over the last 12 months Okay, and what you can see is when you see these, um, so this is drift in, um, uh, they don't have the units here, centimeters per second, okay, uh, so 30 centimeters a second, zero, uh, basically the, the uh, wind patterns change and you get these cyclones which are low pressure areas, the high pressure area comes in, it's deflected to the right by the Coriolis, so you get this uh, counterclockwise motion here. Um, and when you see these really uh, uh, confined, uh, tight twists with a central eye, that's a cyclone, low pressure area, moving through, and that can actually, um, depends on the ice condition. We've had some cyclones in 2018, uh, back in, uh, you know, you can see that they come periodically. We had some in June, uh, but the ice is thicker in June, um, so it didn't, it wasn't affected so much. It would. You know, this, these cyclones will generate wave action, etc. You can see the export through the Fram Strait here. 
you know, you can see export through the Canadian Archipelago, uh, the nearest strait, some export through here, etc. So depending on the weather pattern, <coughs> the amount of export is varying. What we're seeing now, because the ice is so thin and fractured and broken up, is we're, you know, when it's receding, um, to, you know, from the coast. So we're not see we're seeing much less export out out the uh, Fram Strait, for example. We're in a different regime of, of, of melt. Okay, so, uh, so let's move on. So if you just click uh, again, um, Arctic sea ice graphs, and you can click that here. And what, what we're going to look at is that we're going to look at what's happened, at what the ice looks like. Um, so this is September 4th, 2018. So we have about another week or two at the most left in the melt season and again I'd like to point out that the, the thickest ice is is the light blue two meters to two and a half meters along here a little tiny bit of red <coughs> red I can see a tiny dot of red here that's the only <coughs> you know little pocket of thicker ice uh, the blue is about one and a quarter meters uh, this there's some one and a half meter ice here uh, one and a quarter meter ice, but most of the ice is, you know, it's very, very thin. It's like less than a meter. It's this this purple color coding. So this is this is where we are this year, and we can compare ourselves to um, September of last year. Okay, very similar, but some different features. There's a bit seems a bit more of the blue here than last year. Um, although, you know, here there's continuous uh, thicker ice, a bit thicker ice here and in, in, in the Canadian Archipelago where it's, we don't see that so much this year. It's more broken up and chunky, if you like. And then in uh, 2016, um, there was more thicker ice available. Um, and in 2015, there was a, a bit more as well, similar to uh, 2016. And in 2014, 2014, a big change between 2014 and 15. There is, uh, you know, more. Uh, there is more of this, uh, you know, two to two and a half meter ice here. Um, the big break uh, for the next year is basically gone in 2015, 2016. You know, broken up, and then it's on its way out. Okay, so the trends are all down. Um, this is 20. This is the maximum ice. Um, so it's about March. It's usually about mid-March or so. So maximum in 2018. So this melted out over the melt season to this, this year. Okay, and you can see there is some thicker ice here, but there's very little. And then if we go to 2017, the minimum, and then 2017, the maximum in March, there's a bit more of the thicker ice here, um, bigger chunks throughout there. Um, and then if we go to this is 2016 the minimum and 2016 the maximum and then 2015 the minimum and 2015 the maximum okay so there is the more there is thicker ice here that formed in the winter okay the green is three meters uh, the yellow <coughs> three and a half to four meters some four meters some five meter ice here in 2015 in the winter which uh, melted out to this basically big big uh, melting of the thicker ice that year and then in 2014 uh, we had some the minimum we had some of the thicker ice left like I said compared to 2015 and so on now I can't I don't have the maximum in 2014 the data only goes back so this is July of 2014 this is, so this July to September and you can see the difference of how much the thicker ice melted out. So basically what we're seeing here is there's a huge reduction of thicker ice. Okay, again we can compare the 20 this year's minimum to last year's minimum to 2016's minimum to 2015's minimum to 20 14's minimum and between 2014 and 2015 there was the most noticeable effect. So thank you for watching this video and I will continue um, this analysis. Thanks.